Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go over why Anakin blamed Obi-Wan on Tatooine after Anakin's mother died. If you all remember, he's in the Lars homestead and he's tinkering with something when Padme walks in. And this is just after he slaughtered the Tusken Raiders. And he says to her, it's all Obi-Wan's fault. He's jealous. He's holding me back. And he throws whatever he throws into the distance at the wall. So what exactly did Anakin mean that Obi-Wan is jealous? Jealous of what? And why is he holding him back? Well, we can theorize, obviously, that he is jealous that Anakin is so powerful, or at least that's what Anakin thinks. But we have a canon answer in the Attack of the Clones novel. Now, all of these novels, the Attack of the Clones novel, Revenge of the Sith, Phantom Menace, A New Hope, so on and so forth, the novelizations from the movies are all stamped by George Lucas. They all are approved by George Lucas. And I say this because I interviewed Matthew Stover, and he told me that George was very, very hands-on with everything to do with the novel that he wrote for Revenge of the Sith, the novelization. And I really enjoy reading the novels because, or listening to the novels, because they have so much more than the actual movie gives us. There's more that happens, there's more dialogue that goes deeper into things, and there's a lot of different scenarios that aren't in the actual film. And the fact that George signs off on this stuff, to me, is pretty interesting because it means that this is canon in his world, and this is how it would have gone. But for, you know, time's sake of a movie, it was cut short or cut out. Anyways, the answer we're looking for here goes more in depth in Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones, the official novelization. So if we go to that scene in the novel, we get this part here. And there's a lot more than the very limited few lines from Hayden Christensen from Anakin in the movie where he says, it's all Obi-Wan's fault, he's jealous, he's holding me back. All of that is actually expanded upon, and we get this right here. It's all Obi-Wan's fault. He stormed across the room and slammed his fist onto the workbench again, nearly dislodging the plate of food. He put me out of the way to guard me, she said quietly, and of course meaning Padme. I should have been out with him, hunting the assassins. I'd have had them a long time ago and would have gotten here in time and my mother would still be alive. See, so this for me is interesting because I thought that Anakin is just you know, talking out of his arrogance. He's saying that Obi-Wan is jealous. He's holding me back. He's not giving me the power I need or the knowledge I need to save my mother, to save those from dying because he's jealous that I'm already more powerful than him, which in essence, once we read the next line is kind of what he means, but there's actually more to it is that if he had actually gone on the mission with Obi-Wan to find Padme's assassins, then he would have gotten them sooner because he's so much more of a detective and so much more of a warrior than Obi-Wan is, he'd have figured it out much faster, is what he's thinking, and that would have freed up more time for him to go to Tatooine and save his mother a little earlier before she died. So maybe she wouldn't be as wounded as she was when he got to her at the Tuscan camp and therefore she would have survived. Padme then replies, you can't know, and she's cut off when he says, he's jealous of me. Anakin rambled on, paying no attention to her at all. He wasn't talking to her, she realized, but was just playing it all out verbally for himself. She could hardly believe what she was hearing. He put me out of the way because he knows that I'm already more powerful than he is. He's holding me back. So that right there, answers and confirms what I originally thought is that Obi-Wan isn't teaching him what he wants to know because he's putting him out of the way because he's jealous because he knows that Anakin has so much more potential, which couldn't be further from the truth. I don't think Obi-Wan was ever jealous of Anakin. I felt he was just a very powerful weapon that needed to be controlled. And if he wasn't, then he'd be just very, very dangerous to himself and to everyone else in the galaxy, which is exactly what happened. Now, in actual reality here, if Anakin hadn't been set on that mission to protect Padme, he may not have actually been able to save his mother, or at least see his mother one last time. I think if he was on a mission with Obi-Wan, he probably would have been caught up with that and would have led them to eventually the Genosian arena and so on and so forth, most likely. So I think the way things ended out was that he at least got to say goodbye to her and she got to see him one last time, you know, eight or nine years or so later. Now, the interesting thing with the novels is that they really go into a lot more detail. So for example, that Tusken Raider slaughter that Anakin did went into so much more detail than the actual film. Anakin was really showing a lot of his force abilities in this scene in the novel, and it was really riveting to read. 
Now, before I get cancelled for saying that again, I gotta say, it was a cool chapter. I mean, he was using the force, he was using force speed, it, it was describing him like he was some sort of a vampire moving in the night, and he was throwing boulders on the sand people, he was just using the force in ways that a Jedi should never use the force, purely out of anger and rage, and he was using techniques and things that we have never even seen him do in the movies. So, I personally would have liked to have seen that in the film, I think it would have given a much more darker edge to Anakin and exactly the things he was capable of when he would let go. And this brings me to my other point is that I think Obi-Wan failed Anakin in the sense that he should have been a better master. And this goes for the whole Jedi Council. They should have allowed Anakin to use more of his abilities and realizing that yes, he is extremely powerful, he's extremely gifted. But instead of trying to just subdue him and make him fit within the curriculum of the Jedi Order, they should have maybe allowed him to stretch his wings a bit and use his powers and therefore better understand understanding them and through using them he'd be able to control them because he would know exactly how far his potential could reach. I think this is something maybe Qui-Gon would have done with Anakin is that he would have been much more not just a better master but a father figure and been there when Anakin's emotional issues which were by far and large his main issues in Star Wars. He didn't really have any other problems, he didn't have any other shortcomings such as his powers which were extremely vast and far beyond pretty much everyone at the Jedi Temple and definitely if he reached his potential beyond even Master Yoda and Windu. It was his inability to control his emotions and his anger and his fears that led him to the dark side. And I think if Obi-Wan had been a little more experienced with how to train someone like this, then we may not have had the galaxy turn out the way that it did. But then again, Obi-Wan wasn't ready. He was a Jedi Knight and just turned Jedi Knight when he was training Anakin, so he was still a kid himself. Anyways, this hopefully gives a little more clairvoyance as to that scene in Attack of the Clones, as to when Anakin says that Obi-Wan was holding him back, and that he's jealous and that it's all Obi-Wan's fault. This is one reason why I really love the books. It really adds so much more depth and dialogue to the scenes, allowing us to go a little deeper into the character's mind, psyche, psychology, and help us understand overall a little more about our favorite world of Star Wars, or should I say galaxy. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed my thoughts on it. Leave a like if you did, and I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you, always.